Boss Tube. I'm Jennifer and this is Stitching with the Waves. Welcome to my channel. It's great to see you guys again. It's been about three weeks since my last video. It's real early Sunday morning and I thought I'd get up real quick before I take my daughter to her lacrosse game and try and get a video filmed for you guys before I have to go to that. So um, what has been going on since my last video? Um, my daughter, my oldest daughter had her birthday so we celebrated that one weekend and then all of our sports are going strong right now. One of my daughters is playing lacrosse, the other one is doing softball this season so um, we're spending a lot of time out on the field and my youngest also uh, has a gymnastics class that she does. My oldest plays clarinet so I have had a lot more stitching in the car time to do and so I have some progress there on those projects that I'll show you in a few minutes. So that's been exciting. Actually, um, you know, it gives me, when they're at a lesson, it gives me, you know, 45 minutes or so to just sit in the car and stitch quietly by myself and maybe put on a show or a YouTube video, a floss tube video on my phone, which is really like nice dedicated time that I haven't really had um, since I started working again and since school started and things have just gotten really busy. So it's nice to have that time, like that quiet time for myself a couple of times a week while they're, you know, at a lesson that's not really long enough for me to leave and and go back. I can just sit outside the lesson in the car and stitch. So I've been enjoying that. Um, I feel like we're kind of settling into a routine finally. It's been um, five weeks, I think, of school that we've completed. I think tomorrow starts week six. But I finally feel like we have a routine and things are a little bit more settled and I'm starting to get a little bit more um, a little bit more stitching time. Sorry, the cat is down here. She, we've, uh, the cat and I are not real happy with each other this morning. She is about 15 years old. If she comes back, she just walked away from me again. If she comes back, I'll try and pick her up and show you guys. She's a black cat. We adopted her when she was an adult, so we're not really sure how she, old she is, but we think she's around 15, and she takes quite a bit of medication and things like that for different uh, issues that she has. This morning, she did not want to eat her food with medication in it, so I had to catch her and give her the medication that stimulates her appetite, so hopefully she will eat the other food with the medication in it. Um, so she got mad at me because I caught her and did that. So then she went out on the porch and started eating the plants. So I went out on the porch and sprayed her with a water bottle to get her to stop eating the plants. So now she's kind of mad at me. But I think she's also kind of getting hungry. So she's over here wanting some food, but her food is over there. It is out. She needs to eat the food with the medicine in it and then I can give her something else. So hopefully while we're doing the video, she will settle herself down and go over there and eat. Otherwise, I'm going to have to catch her and give her more medication with the syringe. Like where you have to wrap her in the towel and try and do, and that's just not, neither one of us enjoy that. So I'm hoping I can get her to eat the food. Oh, um, last time I forgot to tell you about our new Joanne store. So I mentioned before that the two Joanne stores closest to me were closing and then I had seen a coming soon sign in a shopping center that's like even closer to my house than those two stores were. Um, and I was wondering how large at the store it was going to be because that particular uh, strip center that they're going into is probably one of the very oldest in our town and the stores in there are all quite small. But I think they maybe it's in a, in a corner, so I don't know if that particular corner spot was larger or if they combined maybe a couple of different storefronts to make one, but it's open, it's huge, and it is so nice. I uh, went in there a few weeks ago. Um, it opened like maybe a month ago, and I went in a couple of weeks ago with my daughter, and I recognized several of the workers from both of the stores who had closed, so I was happy to see that, that the those workers you know still had a job, still had a place place to go and that it was um, experienced workers in there. It's not, you know, new people who um, don't know how to cut fabric or don't know where things are. So that was great. Um, and like I said, it's huge. The one that was in my town before that I typically would go to was tiny. They had one wall, one aisle right against the front of the store that was the decor. And that was all there was. So it was just like this tiny, and it wasn't even the whole front wall. It was just like half of the front wall. So that was great. Like you go in and it's just aisles and aisles of the decor stuff. A whole, I would say third of the store is just fabrics. Um, just huge, just 
everything. They have everything. I went down uh, the, the floss aisle and I have not been in a store that had all of the DMC colors actually there and available in their little cubby holes in years. Usually you go in and there's always some missing, you know, some not there, some there. But this store was, I don't know if it's just because it was just newly opened, but it was fully stocked. Everything was just completely fully stocked. The previous store near me that was small was always just kind of chaotic. They had so much, so much stuff that they were trying to squeeze into the small area that it was always just a mess. Like you just had to dig through things. It was, I don't know, things were always just all jumbled up on the shelves. It wasn't organized. So when I could, I would take the time to drive further away uh, to go to the larger store. But you know, that can be hard to do sometimes when you just need some floss or, you know, you just have a few minutes and you're already, you're already near there and you just want to browse for a couple of minutes. You know, it was just, it was always chaos. So this store was really nice. They also have a huge area in the center of the store that they call the cafe. So it's got big long tables and one of those machines where um, you can push a button and it'll make you all sorts of fancy different coffee drinks. It's out of a machine, but it's still, like, it's free coffee. It's great. And they also had packaged cookies sitting there as well uh, next to the coffee that were free. So my daughter was happy about that. She got a hot chocolate from the coffee machine and a package of cookies and you know, it's like, this is great. That keeps her entertained while we browse everything. She loves to look at craft things too. So she's, you know, usually fairly well entertained in a store. Um, but having some little treats is always, always nice. So I'm hoping that that will be a good location for me to get more finishing fabrics and things like that. Um, when I want to FFO things because the fabric selection in the past at our small store was just so tiny I could never find anything there. I would go and look and I just it was rare that I would actually find something that would work for what I was looking for. So I'm excited to have that nice store open closer to us. Um, what else? I think that's about it for updates on things. So let's jump into FFOs. I actually had time to do a couple of FFOs and my goal for 2021 was to have more FFOs than finishes. So I took a few minutes this morning and counted up. So far this year, I have FFO'd 16 things, which is surprising to me um, because I didn't FFO anything over the summer, but I guess in the spring, I was a lot more productive with that. I don't know. Uh, that number surprised me, 16 FFOs, and I've also had 20 finishes this year, which also surprised me because again, in the summer, I just kind of didn't have as much time, things slowed down a lot, but I've had a lot, I've done a lot, I've accomplished a lot. So I'm glad I looked at those numbers kind of partway through the year here because I've been feeling like I, you know, some days I'm lucky if I get even 15 minutes to stitch with being back at work. And so just, I haven't felt like I've been making a lot of progress, but seeing those two numbers, I'm like, wow, I have done a lot this year. You know, this is good. I am making a lot of progress. I am getting things done. Um, so that was nice. And then I looked at, I have a spreadsheet that I've kept for years. I've had it probably since like 2005, around, around then is when I started just listing out, you know, here's my project, here's the date I started it, the date I finished it, the date I FFO'd it, um, the fabric I've used, that sort of thing, just basic information. And I just, you know, it's not anything fancy. It's, they're just listed out and I just have different categories, you know, different sections for uh, the whips I have, my things that need to be finished and my things that are FFO. So I just looked back on there at my list of things that needs to be finished and I've got 22 projects on there and 11 of them, half of them are a bit older. So they were finished stitching in either 2020 or before. So, and then half of them I finished stitching this year and just haven't FFO'd yet. So, I would love for 2021 to get those 11 older projects fully finished. I don't know if I can do 11 more <laughs> just with the time that I have, especially because some of them are older and just languishing there in the box because I'm not sure what I want to do with them. I can't figure it out. I've tried to figure it out and I just haven't been able to wrap my brain around it. And I don't want to force it. I don't want to, um, make myself FFO something just so I can say it's FFO'd, but I would really like to do something with some of those older pieces. So I've got seven projects from 2020, two projects from 2019, and then two projects that are 
pre-2019. I think one was from 2018 and one was from 2007, which is my wedding sampler. And I know I finished that the year that I got married. So that one's been around a long time and I just haven't, I bought fabric, but it wasn't perfect. So I have some ideas and things I could do to the fabric to make it work better. It just, that's one of those projects where I'm like, I, it's an important piece. So I don't want to just uh, finish it for the sake of finishing it. But finding the perfect thing is a bit difficult. So I'm gonna work on those over the next few months and see what I can do with those 11. But I do have two that were both finishes, the both older finishes. One was a 2020 finish and one was, I think around 2006 that I finished it and I've just been languishing in that box. So I'll show you those now. The first one was uh, the Beginner Hardanger Sal. This was from a website, stephaniebee.com. I'll put the link in the description box. And it was just a freebie project that she posted for people who wanted to learn how to do hard anger. And she posted, I think it was once a week. And the, the posts are all still up there. So if you ever wanted to try out hard anger, I highly recommend trying this piece. It was really simple to go through. The blog is in French, but if you use uh, the Google Chrome browser, there's a op translate option where you can uh, have it translate the blog for you. And the PDFs all print out, you know, you don't need to understand a foreign language to look at a stitch diagram. So I would highly recommend trying this out. I showed it back when I had finished the stitching, but I'll try and get it focused up close here. There we go. So I just put a piece of navy blue fabric behind it. And then I used, um, this is the Tranquility fabric. And oh gosh, I just blanked on, I think it's a Moda fabric, I think. Um, I had the five inch squares that I made a disappearing nine patch quilt from and I've also made project bags from it you've seen quite a bit from me in this fabric line so I just you know took one of the five inch squares because it was the perfect size I cut the front piece down to the same five inches and stitched up a little pillow so this one I think next time I FFO I'm gonna try putting some trim on it but uh, that's as far as I got in the time that I had for FFOing so that's what I did with it the other piece, this is the older piece that was from 2006, and it's called Beginner Whitework Ornament. It was a freebie on Teresa Wentzler's blog, so I don't know if it's still up there or not. I had printed out the pattern, you know, back in probably 2005, 2006. Uh, there's another version as well. There's the Intermediate work, Whitework Ornament, which has a little bit more advanced um, stitching in it. So you, if, if they're still there, I also recommend um, trying those out because it was a lot of fun. I forgot to tell you, this was, uh, the Hardanger piece was on 36 count Edinburgh linen in flax. And then this piece, I'm not sure, but I think it's 32 count, maybe 28 count. I mean, I could see the holes. So this might be a 28 count. It's a very, very similar color to the flax. Super similar. Um, I did the same thing with, picked a fabric from the Tranquility line to put on there, just a little five inch square, and then I put navy blue behind it. This does not, is not hardinger, so there's nothing cut out, but there's a lot of eyelets, so I needed to put something there. I filled it with the walnut shells, and if I didn't put a fabric behind it, the pieces of walnut shell could come out of some of the eyelet stitches. So I'll try and get this up closer. There we go. There it is. Just a cute little pillow. And then I used some of this um, velvet ribbon. It's a navy blue velvet ribbon that I found at Michael's or Joanne's in, in the yarn section. And I just, you know, kind of made, made big loops to hold it onto, onto the pillow. Um, I didn't, I want to use the same trim on both of them. I wanted to kind of switch it up a little bit. So I need to dig through my pile of stuff and see what I want to do. But yeah, super happy. Finally got this piece FFO'd into something I can actually use. Um, I didn't want to do them as ornaments because I kind of wanted to um, have them out all year long. And I thought as a pillow, you know, neither, neither one of these is, is super seasonal, um, even though they're, I think both, I think pretty sure the hard anger piece was listed as an ornament as well. Um, so I just finished them as little pillows rather than doing like a Christmas ornament thing that I would only have out part of the year. So these are the perfect size to just sit in my little tiered trays. Oh, and if you notice back here in my tiered tray, I have um, kind of decorated for fall 
when Caitlin and I went to Joanne's, we found some little fall decorations that we wanted to get. So we immediately came home and decorated for fall. But I don't have a, patriot, a fall runner yet, so I still have my patriotic runner. <laughs> out here. And then there's my other pumpkin. So, you know, we're just kind of mixing seasons. Hopefully I can at some point get a, a fall runner put together. <laughs> Otherwise we'll just have patriotic all year long, right? It'll be fine. Oh, I meant to show you guys all this speaking of fall. That was it for my FFO. So we'll jump to these uh, real quick. I just pulled my fall cross stitching. I don't have a whole lot of fall seasonal pieces, so I just pulled what I did have and I thought I'd show you guys again. You've seen them all before if you watched my channel for a long time. This one is from Little House Needleworks. It was a seasonal series when you bought the um, little house pattern for each season. It came with one of their uh, Belle Suave silk flosses to stitch it in. So I believe this floss color was called Cinnamon. It's just the autumn, autumn house there. there it goes. So that one, this was a freebie pattern for autumn. It says autumn in French. It was from a French blogger, Mimi. And it's the same as the current, the same blog as the current sales that I'm doing right now. This was last year's sal. So let me see if you can get it focused up close and do the twirl for you. So um, I think it still thinks my head is in here. So let me find my cardstock. Here we go. There we go. Oh, focus. So I um, just, it was a long skinny piece. So I decided that finishing it on a drum would be the perfect thing. That is really difficult to do to turn that completely around. I just used a plaid on the top and a denim on the bottom. This was, I believe, the first drum I ever made. I, I think. I'm pretty sure that's the first one I ever did. Then I have from Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. This is Autumn Sampler Banner. And I'll hold it back here first. This piece hangs, oh, you can't quite see it. It's just out of the frame. I have a clock, and the bottom part of it is a shingle, so this hangs on the shingle part right there. I've done all these seasons as well, so I just switched them out for each season up there. Love those little blue squirrels, they're so cute. And all of these patterns, I pretty much, yeah, I think every single one of them I kind of switched out to make my, the colors that I wanted so it would go with the decor of my house, except for this Little House Needleworks one. This is, this floss came with it and I used that one because it, it went well. And all these others, I've switched out at least some of the colors, so it would go with the decor in my house. This is from a French designer, uh, Fleur de Lynn, and she has a website I'll link in the description box below, and she has these little, little cottages of the month. So this is September. And then here is October. Gonna have to block my face better there. There we go, October. And I love this one with that just super gigantic squirrel as big as the house. Love this one. October might be like my favorite month as far as the design. But I do love November as well because November has the little black kitty in the corner. Just like my Casey. Maybe down there. So that is pretty much the extent of my fall stitching right now. I have a couple more fall pieces that I'm working on uh, this year that I'll show you in just a minute here. All right, so I think we are ready for finishes. I took care of all that stuff, get that moved out of the way. Okay, and a coffee break because it's early. All right, so next up is the piece I was working on uh, is my travel piece in the car. I've been working on this pretty much all summer and I got it finished the week before the first day of fall. So that was perfect. That was my goal. It's gonna be stitching these in the season. This is from the Drawn Thread and it is Spot of Summer. And I stitched this one on 40 count Mallow, which I believe is just a Zweigert color that you can just, um, that you know, an official Zweigert color. It's not a hand dyed fabric. I got this from 123 Stitch. And I used 
that called for DMCs, and then it called for one Fancy Floss in a color that I didn't have. That was this uh, golden color that is the sun. So I just picked, I think this is Queen Bee, Honey Bee? I think it's Queen Bee from Classic Colorworks because I had that. So love that, the sun, the little watermelon and sunflowers and all of that. It's super cute. And then the little blank spot here, um, they had a charm. I think it's a sun charm in each of them. I do have some charms that say 2021 on them and I was kind of thinking about if it will fit in the spot on each of the four pillows using that charm. Otherwise I've got to figure out, I, just, I don't know where to buy charms you guys. Where do you buy charms from? I saw um, somebody mention Charms by Jupiter, I think it was. But when I looked at their website, like you have to call them or email them. And I don't know, I would love to find a place that you could just order. They also didn't have like the size of the charm listed, you know, like the, the height or width of the charm listed on the website. So that just wasn't that easy um, because I need to, I don't want to order expensive charms and then have them not fit in the small little space I have. So I also have some buttons. Yep, right here, this button collection. Um, from, this, these were my grandmother's buttons. I used to play with these at her house when I was growing up all the time. She had them in a different container and I, I bought the glass container so I could display them a little more. Uh, but I used to play with them, sort them, do all sorts of things with them. So I could just pick one that is in a color that goes well with this and put a little button on there instead. So we'll see when I get around to FFOing these. Um, I was kind of waiting to have the whole season, all four seasons done before I FFO them so I can kind of do them all the same way and they come out the same size. These drums, probably should have waited and done them all at once because as we go through the seasons, <laughs> I thought that I remembered the dimensions that I had cut the fabric for this, but uh, like they get taller. <laughs> and they get lighter and thicker around <laughs> as, as we go through the seasons. This I think is the smallest one and then I just, I didn't go back and look at my notes or go back and measure the piece or anything like that. So, uh, you know, I finished them and I put them next to each other and I was like, oh gosh, they got really big. <laughs> so it's all good, right? It's all good. They're not out, they're not ever displayed together but sometimes it makes displaying them, you know, I can't, it's a little more harder to switch them out just in the same spot because some of them are so big, they block other things. So, um, okay, let's move on. That was my only finish that I had. So I'll go ahead and show you my new car project, which is the drawn thread spot of autumn. There's the piece. This one used, I think three different fancy flosses. Yeah. And I didn't have any of them. One of them was the same yellow color as Summer. So I just went ahead and substituted Queen Bee again. And then another one uh, was the leaves on this tree, the falling leaves, the tree here and those leaves. So I don't know if you can see very well. It's kind of like a brown and plum color mixed. And I didn't have anything like that, but I ended up picking an orange from Classic Color Works called Falling Leaves, which was a pretty heavily variegated orangey, like burnt orangey colors. Um, and they worked well with the other colors in the piece. So I decided to go with that. And then um, it, the letters, the alphabet letters. So if you look here in the summer piece, I gotta find the heart stock again. In the summer piece, the letters are kind of variegated, but that's just done with DMCs where you just alternate. They did like three or four columns in one color, three or four columns in another color across the row of letters. And so when I looked up, I could not find a fancy floss that I liked either. Um, it's kind of in a blue green, really dark blue green color. And I just didn't have anything that I thought looked very good. So I looked up the color conversion for the called for floss into DMC and it listed two DMC colors. So I just thought I'll just use those two DMCs and I'll just do the same thing that they did in the summer piece where they you know, just kind of did columns to make it look variegated rather than using an actual variegated floss. So that's my plan for that. And this is stitched on Autumn, Autumn, where is it in my notes here? 
This is, um, oh, it's a 40 count R&R &R linen in vintage gray. So I still have it in the hoop. I just got a start on it last week and this week because I have the tree done. And that leaves are done. That's the fallen leaves color from Classic Color Works. I got the birds started up here. And then over here is going to be a row of gourds. So I have the strand of floss in the way there for you. But I just started doing the leaves. I did the vine and then just started doing the leaves. So that's what I've gotten done so far on that one. And I've made a lot of progress just in two weeks. So I think hopefully as long as my stitching time stays the same in the car, I should be able to get that piece done during the fall. And then I'll start the winter piece after that and they'll be done with all four seasons. Now I have to find something else I can stitch in the car. Um, okay, next up is my current cell. That is my only one and I've gotten it caught up. So this is the picture here of what it looks like. And this is from a French blogger named Mimi, the same one who did the pieces I finished into the drums. And this is the last season that I am working on for this year, the winter one. It's stitched on 40 count anthracite, which I also believe is a just a straight swagger color that I got from 123 Stitch. It is not a hand dyed fabric. And there we go. Last time I had just started this little mountain chalet right there in the center and the top half of the picture basically this was parts one and two that's what had been released last time i filmed the video and so i got that didn't quite get that caught up before part three came out which was that part there part three came out right after i think i had filmed the video and then part four just came out last thursday and look at how much stitching time i had this weekend Do it. I have gotten this piece caught up. So there's still this little section underneath the trees right here that is blank. So I have emailed Mimi the picture of my completed piece and she will email me back that section right there. I'll get that stitched in. So my next video, I should be able to show you this piece fully finished. Let's do a little scan. So I love how this one's turning out. When I first started it, I wasn't 100% sure about the darker fabric with it, but I think there's enough lighter colors in here that it is looking really pretty. So happy with that one. And I'm really excited to have all four seasons done and be able to, you know, do something with that whole collection as well and have that to display. Okay, last whip is the advent calendar from Chris Gogo. And I'm doing each of these little individual motifs on a separate piece so that I can use them as a countdown to Christmas advent calendar. So last time I was working on this little gift box down here, I finished that and now I'm on the gingerbread house right there. So I'm not going to unwrap the whole thing, but here we go. Here is the little gift box. Last time I only had a few stitches, like a half a dozen stitches in the bow up there at the top to start with really hard to get that where it's not oh there we go that's better so it's not wrinkly you can actually see it there's the gift box and then this time I am working on the gingerbread house so I've already stitched this one once I stitched on like a greenish fabric last year as my daughter's Christmas ornament that's the one they each picked out a piece from this collection to have as their Christmas ornament last year. So I am working on that one. And this is on 40 count beach brew. Yeah, 40 count beach brew from r, r Fabrics. And I am now up to, let's see. I've done all the way through day eight. And this one's day nine, right? Let me just double check. Yeah, so I'm finished days one through eight. This will be day nine. So I am a third of the way through because there's 24 that I'm trying to stitch. I don't know that I'm going to be able to finish this for Christmas this year. I really want to because I feel like my kids are still young enough that they'll enjoy changing it out, but they're pretty quickly going to get to those teenage years where they're probably going to be too cool for that sort of thing. So I'm really trying hard to get this done for this year. I'm going to FFO whatever I have completed. Um, 
hopefully it'll be the majority of them. We might not be able to start on December 1st, but hopefully we can start really close to it and start using it. And then I'll have them all completely done for next year. But I don't know, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna push myself and really try to get this piece done. It doesn't take that long to stitch each of them. You can just, you see like, I, like the fabric, like it's just unwieldy to stitch on this piece in the car. Um, but it's easier for me to have more fabric around it. And if I, if I cut each piece into its own individual piece of fabric and then stitch it, I would need more of a border around it. And so I'd waste more of the fabric and I just don't have that large of a piece of fabric to do that. So I don't know, I might have to just suck it up and try to deal with this in the car <laughs> at some point if I, if I start to run out of time, but we'll see. So far it's going pretty well. So I think that is it for cross stitch. I had a couple of quilting things. So my goal, um, I was feeling like I wasn't making any progress on the FFOing or on quilting at all. Um, so I decided I would try one weekend to work, set aside some time to FFO, and then the next weekend set aside some time to do a little quilting, and then back to FFOing the next weekend and just alternate. So I'm trying to just make a little bit of progress because if I can get anything done, that's better than nothing, and then I'll feel like I'm getting somewhere. So last weekend was FFOing those two little pillows. And then this weekend um, I set out, I have for my um, fall quilt, it's the Cider uh, by Basic Gray for Moda fabrics. And I'm using a Moda Illusions pattern. And I showed you the two blocks in my last video that I had completed. I have all the pieces cut out for all of the blocks and they're all like stacked up together in little stacks and I have them all in a little box. So yesterday morning, I took out the blocks, I laid them out on my workspace and then throughout the day when I had 10, 15 minutes, I would come and sew a couple of pieces together and get them ironed real quick. So that actually worked out really well and yesterday I was able to get another block done. So there is my third block. I am only doing a three by three grid, so nine blocks. So that means I am a third of the way done with piecing this quilt together, the quilt top together. So that is exciting. I'm, I finally feel like I'm making some progress on that because I hadn't touched it since June. So hopefully um, when I'm done this video, this is my workspace here. My sewing machine is just to my right. So I, when I'm done this video, I'm gonna lay out the next block and hopefully throughout the day today, uh, when I have a few minutes here and there, I can get another block sewn together maybe or at least part of it, something, anything. Anything's better than nothing, right? So that's done. And then my other quilting thing that I've been looking at and kind of noodling around in my mind lately is this project. Let me open it real quick because I just realized it's gonna be wrinkly, sorry. Okay. So this is something that my mom brought up to me when she came to visit in June. My great-grandmother passed away in 1986 and when my mom was helping clean out her belongings, she came across this stack of quilt blocks. They're just nine patches and there are 28 of them. So there, it's, you know, I'll just show you a few of them here. Very scrappy, uses some of the same fabrics, but I don't know like this one's very organized, but some of them are real scrappy and they're not, they're not, um, you know, just alternating blocks. Here's another one that's alternating. So some of them do, some of them don't. There's kind of all sorts of colors. Um, I don't know what this fabric is. I, I don't think it's like feed sack fabric. I'm just trying to get down. So the ones on the top here are kind of similar. So here is more of a super scrappy-ish one. Um, yeah, and then it gets into like some of them are purples and yellows. Some of them have, you know, some solid fabrics mixed with the patterns. Some of them are all patterned. So I don't know. I don't know if she was just planning to put all of these into one quilt or if she was just taking fabrics she had. I have no idea. I mean, she was not a quilter. We don't have any other, um, there's another scrappy one. We don't have any, like she never made quilts, you know what? She wasn't a quilter. 
Um, and my mom wasn't a quilter either. She's a crafter. So when she saw these, she saved them because she did have quite a few friends who are quilters. And I guess she thought maybe at some point she would be able to um, either put these together into a quilt herself or get, get somebody to do it, hire somebody to do it, find a friend who could help her do it. I don't know. Um, this one's got some other different fabrics as well in it. So my thought, I want to make these into preferably two quilts so that one day each of my daughters could have a quilt that was pieced by their great great grandmother and stitched together or quilted by their mother. Uh, I just think that would be a really cool heirloom to have. So I don't have any other fabric, like this is it. I just have this stack of blocks. So they're 28. I was thinking I could do, um, yeah, there's enough that I could put 24 blocks, like a four by six in each, which would be a fairly small quilt. So I could, you know, take, do a nine patch with a solid block next to it, just a solid piece of fabric, and then do another one of the nine patches and another solid piece and just keep alternating them like that. Or I think there's some, I think it's called window panes where you take the block and you put all your nine patches out and in between each you put a, a border like a solid color border in between so it looks like you know the window panes around each of the nine patches so i need to first of all find a quilting store i can go to in person i think that has a really good fabric selection the quilting store near me that i go and i take classes from my machine and where i got my machine they don't have a large, they're pretty small, they don't have a large fabric collection, and what they do have is very modern fabrics. I need to find a fabric store that has a lot of these like vintage reproduction sort of looking fabrics, so I can find something that would work, because I need to, some sort of fabric that would coordinate. And I think I probably could do white, I guess, but then I still need, I need something for the back, I need something for the border, um, so I don't know if any of you are quilters and have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Um, if you know of websites or blogs or groups or whatever, whatever, wherever we could go to get advice on doing this. I am a member of like one quilting vintage web, uh, Facebook group. So I think I'm going to try and maybe lay these out and see if I can kind of get the blocks split into two different quilts that would make sense and then post pictures of that and see what people recommend doing with it. I don't know. I, I've never attempted something like this before with any sort of vintage stuff. I have no idea how old these blocks are. I don't know when she stitched them together, but like I said, she passed away in 1986. So it was sometime before that. Um, so that is my one of my quilting projects that I want to want to deal with. So um, I just have spent a lot of time thinking about it, but I haven't really made any progress on where to go with it and figuring out what to do with it. So I think that's pretty much all I have for you today. That is about it. I hear people starting to wake up upstairs, which is good. I need to go uh, get people ready to go. We've got lacrosse today and oh, I'm also excited. I have a Zoom call this afternoon. Uh, Carla from Carla Bean Crafty is organizing a Zoom call for um, just stitchers to, to join in. She had mentioned it on her, her videos the past couple of weeks and so I said I would love to join in. I had only made it to one uh, stitching meetup of a local group in my area before the pandemic kind of shut everything down and that group seems to have just kind of dissolved. They're not, they're not meeting in person right now. Nothing's happening with that. So I think it'll be really fun to participate in a call where, you know, it's other stitchers and I can just sit and stitch for a little while um, and chat with other, other stitchers because I haven't had the opportunity to do that in a couple of years now. So that'll be fun. You want to say hi? Hi, yeah. Caitlin's up. So she's saying hello. Um, I'm just doing it here for a while. I know, you're, yeah, it's a little, it's a little low. These chairs, I, we had gotten new chairs a little while ago. They're kind of low. They're lower than the chairs we had before, so I have to aim the camera down a little lower. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So we're going to go and get our day started, and I'll see you back here again next time. Bye.